Today, I'm gonna give you my gold nuggets on how to kickstart your business when you start to feel it getting quiet. Now, I know there's a lot going on around the world at the moment, and people might be thinking that we're slowing down in the economy, or we've had these crazy couple of years, but you know what? Every business has a high season and a low season, and I wanna help you tackle those so that you can make the most out of it and grow into the future. So stick about, this is not just for business owners, it's also for baristas and cafes, because you guys can have a huge impact in the day-to-day -day operations, the growth, and the future of the business. So grab a pen, let's get into it. Now I know it's so easy as a business owner when it gets a little bit quiet, perhaps in an afternoon or a weekend or that down season in your business, to cut your staff hours straight away. And basically, you might send them home half an hour early here or there and start to save yourself maybe a hundred bucks over a whole week in that labor. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to jump into that role to tidy up at the end of the day or close your business, count your tills, or do whatever you've sent them home that they're not gonna do. And I urge you not to make that mistake too quickly. Now, Obviously, if things are going really crazy, you might want to look at that as an option. But too many managers look to cut costs when they start to feel the pressure as the sales going down, rather than looking at increasing sales by adding more marketing, more opportunities, selling a different range of products, and assessing what their customer mix and sales mix is to make sure that when the customer does come in, they get the most profit and the biggest return on the investment of that person walking in the door. So, Take the example of sending someone home um, maybe 15 minutes earlier. It might be you know, 12 bucks an hour or something like that that you're gonna save. But realistically, you could be spending that 15 minutes making a couple of simple changes in either the costing of a menu, replanning something that you might sell that's more profitable, like a special, um, or perhaps even doing some social media marketing. Now, I've got a whole plan here. It's a three-step plan that I wanna take you through. So maybe get that pen ready and start get ready to start taking some notes because it's gonna help you have an impact today. That's it, it's not gonna to happen tomorrow. Straight away, you can start to build a better business for the future. Because anything you do tomorrow is only gonna multiply and be a bigger fruit when it's busier. And when you come to the next quiet season, you're gonna be higher above where you were last year. Now let's not beat around the bush and say that you know a staff member behind a counter who's maybe taking a coffee order or a waitress is just an order taker. They're not, they are salespeople in the hospitality industry. So getting them to upsell you know, some fries as they might have done in the old days, would you like fries with your burger or selling that special, that's really what it's about. So if you're not empowering your team to understand the things that they wanna sell or should be selling or focusing on in your business, you're doing an injustice to them. Because if you can create a culture where they can maybe monitor, say, selling 10 muffins a day or 50 in a week and having a bit of an in-house competition and then creating that hero at the end of the week, and you might give them a free lunch or a small little gift or something, you know, that will actually empower them to do better at their job and have fun while doing it. If you're the kind of boss that's just at them about wastage or trying to cut down their labor hours or working them harder, it's really a poor way to degrade their positivity in your business and it's only gonna go down from there. So this three-step easy plan can be done by anybody. You don't have to have a crazy marketing or business degree to do it. So the first step is to analyze your current business. The second one is analyze the data and the third is take action now. That's it, straight away, get onto it, don't leave it another day. In analyzing the data, there are three really simple questions that I'm gonna get you to answer, and then we're gonna look at your whole yearly income and just see where your highs and lows are. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is making an analysis of what we're currently doing. And I know a lot of you think marketing is a dirty word, but realistically, I want you to list the three current marketing campaigns that you have in your business. Now most cafe owners or restaurateurs don't actually have a campaign. They think that people are just coming in and they know who they are and they might have something internally, a special deal or a menu item that they want to do or a buffet or a package or whatever it might be. But what are you doing outside of your business to actually bring in new customers? Now not many people have this listed. Now social media is definitely one way to do that. 
but there are other some campaigns. You might have something print in a local media magazine or some sort of flyer around town, a billboard, or even a TV campaign. Some of those are very costly. Now, these things I'm gonna to start to talk about have a zero initial cost out of your pocket. The next question is write down the five top things that your business sells. So if you're a cafe, it's probably gonna be cups of coffee, maybe some sort of sweet, a breakfast item and a lunch item, and then some other, maybe a bag of coffee or something like that that you're selling over the counter. So write those down and do that via a volume. So how many of those you sell over the whole week? What is the most popular five things? Jot them down. Now the next one is what are the top five most profitable items that you have in your menu? Now I know people don't always look at doing the costings in their business, but you have to. You have to make sure that you've got five top profitable things on your menu, otherwise you don't know if you're gonna make any money. Now I want you to make a very simple bar graph. And all we're gonna do is have every single month of the year across the bottom, and each month, I just want you to write the total of sales that you have. So let's say in January, you might have $50,000 of sales because it's summer, and you're a business that's right by the beach and everyone's coming and giving you all this business because the caravan parks are full or the holiday accommodation's full. You hit February and it's a little lower, maybe at 40, 45,000 because you've got everyone going back to school um, or maybe uni hasn't started yet. You know, we have all these different businesses that are affected by the local uh, economy. So we want you to graph that through a whole year. Now, some businesses are gonna be busy around end of financial year, or those Christmas holiday peaks, or just the actual school holiday periods, and you're gonna have huge lulls when the kids are perhaps at school. You may be the other way around. You might be near a university, and you're gonna have a really big influx around those school times, and nothing over the summer holidays. So start to graph that month by month, and you'll get yourself your annual seasonal pattern. Now get yourself a pen and I want you to circle the high months and the low months because in those different parts of your business, you need to start focusing on different areas to make sure you're gonna get the most out of your whole year. Now step two is analyze the data. It's a really simple approach. In the high months where you've got all this traffic and lots of business, you're in sales mode. You need to make sure that you're selling so much more to each customer when it comes into the door. So it is maybe a coffee and a cake or a coffee and a meal. You're trying to get two items to every one customer to increase your average order value or the items that they totally buy for every visit from your customer. In the low months, that's when you actually need to work on fixing your business to make sure you're ready for those peak times to make sure you do have profitable items ready for when you're busy. Now go back and have a look at question two and question three. If these two are not identical, if your most profitable five items aren't your top five sellers, you need to replan in those quiet months and get that fixed straight away. Because otherwise you're selling items that aren't profitable but have a high volume to them, so really you're not focusing on trying to grow either the volume of your business or the profitability of your business, especially when it comes to the time when you're super busy. And this information, once you've got it all lined up, has to be clearly communicated to all of your team so that they can sell the right products to have the best impact in your business. Now, if they don't know what it is, they could be referring what they choose or what they like perhaps, which will be costing you more money just by making a simple recommendation to the most profitable item that is easy perhaps for you to produce or do more of them per hour and help increase your average order value over maybe an hour period or your full day. Now back to question one about what sort of marketing campaigns do you have? If you honestly cannot write down three different marketing campaigns, at the moment you have no growth strategy in your business because all you're doing is focusing on the customers that are inside your business. You're not looking to bring anyone else new from external sources in your doors to increase your sales. You've got a huge problem. You need to fix that straight away. So step three is take action now. I'm gonna break this into two different categories, internal and external, because they need their own attention to make sure that you're gonna get the most out of things. The first thing you gotta do when it's quiet is go outside, go to the street and walk into your business as if you were a customer. 
So take the time often to have a look at what the customers see from your business. Come and have a look at all your signage, whether it's clean, is it in good working order, you know, is it so dirty that they can't actually see where your sign's going, are your umbrellas got tears, holes in them, plants, are they actually nice and inviting or is it just a weed fest? So make sure you do this in the quiet time but maybe put on a list to check it daily so that the customers do feel like they're entering to a beautiful, clean, nice new showroom. So inside, make sure it is inviting, that all of your counters are clean. Usually there's a lot of scuff marks from people kicking them. Your machine's clean if you've got a little bit of a damage there. Maybe take the time to repair that as well. Have a look through at all of your tables, your chairs, turn them upside down, get the gumption out, that's one of your best friends as well, to make sure that when someone does enter your cafe, that they don't feel like it's so, been so busy and not cared for. A customer shouldn't know whether you've had a massive peak or it's really quiet, Every time they enter, they should feel like they're in that beautiful cafe space every single time, no matter how busy you are. Looking for that new customer, you do have to keep looking to evolve, look fresh and clean, not look tired. Because there's always another business that's opening with their new branding, their new shop fit out down the road somewhere, and you need to make sure that you're looking after your assets of your business, not in a physical side, but also from how you project that look and image to the outside public looking in. So in this downtime, you need to change your menu to reflect the top five profitable items that everyone can sell in your business. You may need to just get a chalkboard and start to make a quick change, but reprinting a menu or having a sales, um, a, a special sales menu that can replicate that straight away is gonna help you tomorrow. So get that fixed immediately. I understand you might have this big menu and it might be more expensive to print, but just slipping in some sort of special sheet is gonna have a big impact on that profitability and the higher um, average order value that you're gonna get by implementing it. Have a chat to your whole team and find out what makes them tick. What do they enjoy about their job? I mean, I'm sure they're hopefully in a great environment, having a lot of fun with everybody, but do they really enjoy, you know, trying to sell a few extra things or recommend something particular? You might find that one staff member loves muffins and just loves talking about them. So that person would be the perfect person to come up with new flavors or help the rest of the team understand how to sell them really well. If that person is your best muffin salesman, put them in front of the rest of the team and let them present as to how they do it. You might have a weight person that's just really good at selling the best dessert or the special of the day. Grab that person and help them empower others to do better at their role. You know, it's not always the owner or the manager's job just to do that. If we can lift other people up in the business, other people will lift to their standard as well. And that person that's doing well will feel, you know, a little bit happy, a little bit pat on their back, and hopefully they can lift again and bring everyone else up to a higher level. Now this one goes back to a bit of community engagement. Depending on where you are, you might have a very particular clientele that comes into your business. Maybe you're right near a hospital and you get all the nurses and the doctors or something that come in. Perhaps you're near a school and you're getting all the teachers. I recommend that once a month you pick one day where you're gonna give free coffee or something special to those kinds of people. And to do that, have a really good day, dress up as them. Maybe if it is a doctor's day, have everyone dress up as a doctor and have a good fun community day where you're gonna give back to those people. It is gonna cost you a little bit on that day, but I can guarantee you the rewards of that, of the people that miss that day, are gonna talk about that forever. It's amazing when you hold these days and you don't maybe publicize them as big as you, as you probably should, that everyone talks about that particular day for the next week and then they can't wait for you to do it again. And then that next day will be even bigger. But perhaps it might not be the doctor's day and they come in and they spend all the money because today you're helping out the tradies. It might be a half price bacon egg roll for tradie or a free coffee when they buy a bacon egg roll. Who knows? But by mixing it up once a month, you're celebrating your customers and other people can then start to look forward to have perhaps their day. And I tell you, when they come in the day after, let's say they were a plumber and it was Tradies Day plumber yesterday and they miss it, they are gonna laugh their head off that they missed it and they're gonna tell everybody about how they missed out on their free meal or free coffee. So that is free word of mouth advertising that you didn't even have to pay for. Now we're on to the external side of the marketing 
to take action now in your business. If you did have a fair amount of extra spare cash, you could go and do a marketing campaign. And look, that can be a great outcome for you. A paid print ad, something in the local um, paper or a TV ad or radio or whatever it might be. You always have to have some sort of marketing campaign to not lose touch on the next new customer that you're trying to get into your business. You don't always want to just be marketing to your current customer base. You simply won't grow. I urge you to get involved with your local community groups. When you go to a new town and you see this cafe that's really thriving, if you look a little bit deeper into there, you'll find that they're very well connected in the local community. It may be the cafe that's been there for 20 years and because it's been there so long, they're entrenched with the local swimming club or the sporting club or the, um, the I don't know, the schools, whatever it may be. The community really uses that place as a hub. So if you're new, you actually have access to the community that you probably don't think about. If you've got a wide range of staff, you ask them their interests. Someone might be a basketballer or, you know, um, in a different sort of club. See how you can connect with that club by perhaps offering them some sort of voucher. Now, the good one we always get at the start of the school year is they're always looking for donations for sporting clubs. Now, if you're gonna give some sort of gift voucher or promotional voucher to perhaps the man of the match or um, let's say it's a free pizza for the kid who, who was the best player on the team, if there's a soccer team and there's 10 kids and one person gets it, he's gonna tell all of his mates how great that pizza was when he came back to the next game. And all the other kids are gonna want it. The good thing about a voucher is it only costs you the raw ingredients of that product when it's actually redeemed. So you haven't had to physically pay for it unless it actually gets, gets used in your business. Now if the little boy turns up and gets the free pizza, his mum, his brother, his sister and his dad are gonna be there as well and they're gonna to have to buy a meal as well. So you didn't really give anything away, you just gave away perhaps 50% of that one product where the parents went and paid for everything else. Now tell me, would you give away a 5% discount for a whole family to come in as opposed to one particular person? Of course you would, you'd do it straight away. So there are so many unredeemed vouchers out there that maybe people have prepaid for gift cards um, or perhaps some sort of reward system. The best one around coffees is coffee cards. These things are like gold. There's a bit of a game that we play with these. So we give away every eighth coffee. Now that's 12.5% discount on coffees. And when they want their free one, we don't care whether they get the big one, the small one, the soy, the almond, or whatever. You can't limit that because that's a real negative to them having a free coffee. But I tell you what, when someone comes in and asks for a new one of these because they lost the other one, usually they've got a nearly a full card and you've won. If you have a little button on your till which says free coffee redeemed and you take that and divide it through how many coffees that you've sold totally across the business, it's nowhere near one in eight. It's lucky to be about two, maybe three percent because these end up in people's pockets, they get lost, tatty, who knows, but they never all get redeemed. Now for the price of a card, just hand these things out all day, every day. People are going to feel like they're getting value and you're going to have a great win in your business. Now we've all talked about social media and I know if you're a business owner and it's not your thing, well unfortunately you're going to have to get involved. But you don't have to get involved how you would think you would need to. Now if you're perhaps a little bit older, even like myself, I'm not as, as, as tech savvy as perhaps the younger people in our business. Now there's a whole range of different platforms out there, the Facebook, Instagram, perhaps TikTok, all of these have individual markets that you need to tap into. TikTok's definitely the younger market, perhaps 25 and below. Instagram's probably 25 to 35. And 35 and above would typically be your Facebook market. Now, that's because these programs and platforms started a long time ago when we were all younger. And we've perhaps stuck with them. I don't expect you to go out and be some sort of TikToker because that sounds a bit weird for a you know 40 odd year old owner getting involved in these little basic platforms. But you have a whole team that allow you to actually take content and put it onto these platforms around your business. The whole idea about these um, platforms for businesses is just to show the real life, what's actually happening. It doesn't have to be picture perfect. It doesn't have to be a super made up photo. It just needs to be real and engaging and you'll be able to share so much content with your customers that they'll keep looking at it and want to come back and try that new special or just be reminded that that's where they should go the next time with their friends. Once you've made these accounts on your counter, have some sort of QR code where people can scan it, 
so that they can join onto your Facebook, your Instagram, or TikTok accounts. To do that, perhaps give them a 10% code um, that they can then redeem and get something off their next purchase. It's a nice little way of saying thank you for helping grow your new free marketing campaign. Now we do a lot of different things. We have our YouTube channel, so we make up these little cards and we give them out and people can watch the video or we can have just a specific reminder about our YouTube channel as an overall. So we just hand those out and pop them in every order and if you go to your printer and you can make that up on a simple piece of paper and pop it in every order, it's not gonna cost you much at all. You might need a guillotine to cut up something small, but it's just gonna be that friendly little reminder to help grow that external audience to bring people into your business. Now the argument we always get is, oh, I'm not good at taking photos. I don't have time to take photos. I don't have time to sit there and post them up. Well, the easy thing is you've got a whole team of people in your business. Ask them all over one whole week to take one particular photo of what they love about their job. Now, they might be a kitchen hand and they might take a photo of this massive pile of dishes that they've got to go and do and they just go, you know, take a photo of it and it looks like a mess and it doesn't matter. But the funny catchphrase might be, my challenge for the next 30 minutes. And that's just showing a really key part of the business. It's fun. It's, it's showing the background of what actually happens. You might have an employee of the week or introducing perhaps the new barista. So you might take a photo of that person. The chef might take a photo of the meal of the day or the special you've got going. Now, if you just do that over a whole week and if you're gonna post three times a week, you've now got two weeks worth of content and it was very simple to do. These days, most businesses have a mobile phone of some sort allocated to the business. So make sure all those social media accounts are on there and give that phone to the manager or perhaps someone who is a little bit more senior who loves posting on these platforms themselves personally every single day. The minute they leave your business and walk out the door, they're on their phone. They're probably chucking a post up themselves. So give them the opportunity to put those up for you. You'll be surprised how creative they can be and how amazing that impact can have in your business. And usually they enjoy doing it. So allocate 10 minutes a day for someone to do that for you and your business and you'll see the rewards over a long period of time. So because you've hung around, I'm gonna leave this template as a link down below that you can click on and use in your business. Go on, use it. I really urge you to put this in your business and you'll start to see an impact straight away. And it's just gonna keep rolling on and become the norm of your business that even when the peak comes around, you'll be still doing this and accelerate, accelerating the growth for many years to come. So make sure you take time to assess your business, analyze the data, and then take action on those points. Try and do that three times a year in those low periods of your business so that you're ready for the peaks. Well, thanks again for watching. If you haven't yet already subscribed, please do, we appreciate it. Hit the bell as well, and you'll be notified when we put up our latest video. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.